In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Christ is risen. This beautiful story that we hear today, um, not just in the gospel, but specifically I'm referring to the epistle in the book of Acts, where we hear about St. Peter. And in the same chapter, if you read earlier, you also read about the conversion of St. Paul. But St. Peter today was going about the area, and he sees this blind man, and he had been blind for several years, and St. Peter goes up to him and heals him of his blindness, and many people believed. And as he was there, he was asked to go to one of the towns on the outside, so it's really the outskirts of Jerusalem, really where the territory for the early Christians became very difficult and very problematic for them to move. And he's asked to go to see this woman who just died, Tabitha, or Dorcas is her name in Greek, which means gazelle. But Tabitha was the Jewish, uh, her Jewish name, as she was known by. So we see here that as he goes to see this woman, that she already has two names that she's known by. One is that the Jews knew her, and the second was that the Greeks knew her. So she was some type of disciple that we hear about, but we don't quite know much about her story. So we see the fact that she had died and the women, the, the widows, come to her, uh, come to Jesus and say that, come to, to see Tabitha, come, or they come to Peter, I'm sorry, St. Peter, and say, come see Tabitha. She has just died and she's in this upper room. So as St. Peter goes to see her, he walks in the room, and just picture this. She, it's an upper room, so it's, it was a larger area. And now it says that many, many scholars and, and writers say that, that Tabitha was a, um, uh, like a minister to the, the widows and to the poor, and really the widows and the poor were in the, really in the same category. If you were a widow, you were destitute because you didn't have anyone to take care of you. And many times they were in great need. That's why Christ even says to, the, to the, uh, the, the Jews at the time, and especially the Pharisees, that don't eat the widow's uh, wealth because they need it. And you, you go and you, you take money from them, and they're poor. So we see that Tabitha was ministering to these widows because all these widows are in this room. So St. Peter goes up into this upper room. He's there. And the widows are showing... St. Peter, these articles of clothing that Tabitha had made for them. So we know that she was uh, some type of uh, sewer and, and made clothing for those in need. But there was also something, too, that is implied in the lines that it wasn't just like basic clothing. It wasn't just like a black shirt. It was something of beauty and something that she had made that was beautiful that, that they felt that they needed to show St. Peter, this, these clothings uh, that, that she had made. Now, St. Peter, you can just, there's, there's a beautiful kind of way that he approaches this whole scene. He goes in, he's quiet. He goes to see this woman. He, he's, he knows that he's at the edge of having problems in the city where he's at. He goes in. Now, what I had mentioned, too, before in my sermon about uh, the myrrh-bearing women was that uh, people were mourners, right? They, they had professional mourners in those days. And the women, uh, many times, the louder the women were in yelling and wailing, in those days, that meant the more the person was loved. To, in today's day and age, when we have a funeral and somebody's wailing and yelling, the more medication they, they think we need to give to them. It's not, it's not even in, closely in the same category. It's like, calm them down, get them away from the casket, move them away, it's, this is out of control. But in those days, they were very loud, and you could hear a funeral coming. But St. Peter's in there, and he's, he's standing there looking at her. Now, you could just imagine, he's looking at this, this female disciple who's done ministry, who died very quickly, very suddenly, and was at the outskirts of the area where St. Peter was, and now she's doing this, these ministries, and she dies suddenly. And he's in the room, and I could just picture in his mind just looking at this, this woman who may herself have already been a widow, but had some type of wealth to be able to take care of these other women. 
And he says, everybody get out, which I think is a twofold thing. Number one, Jesus told everyone to get out of the room when he raised the daughter of the synagogue leader. But also, too, I, he wanted to focus. And he knew with the noise and the tears, and it, even at the writings of, of some of the fathers say that where there will be a miracle, there is no room for tears. There's no room for mourning. And Christ even says that um, to the uh, Martha and Mary when he raises Lazarus, but he also cries, and then he stops, and then he says, Lazarus, come out. There's, there, it's incompatible. Tears and, and uh, miraculous uh, events are incompatible at the same time. So he sends everyone out, then he just kneels down, and you can just see him kneeling down, and his prayer is not known of what he said. He could have said, this woman is doing your ministry, don't take her, send her back. Whatever that, that prayer could have been. These, these women that she has in her home that she's making these clothings for and, and taking care of, now these women are lost without, without her. And she died too sudden and no one was able to prepare or to make arrangements to, to have a different um, caretaker for them. But whatever that prayer was, he stands up and he says, Tabitha, arise. If you think about this, this is an extraordinary thing that not only for St. Peter, but also for us to remember that in the presence and the grace of God and in the prayerfulness of our being, that the dead and the alive there's no, there's no separation. And we see that in the transfiguration of Christ, the icon on the far upper side there with Christ standing in the middle. It's the prophet Elias and Moses standing there. And as you may or may not recall, Moses died and the people mourned. The prophet Elias was taken up into heaven alive. And in the glory of the transfiguration of Christ, the two are sitting there standing there, I should say, talking with him as St. Peter, St. John, and St. James are, are there. So St. Peter sees this. He sees that in the glory of God, that the dead and the living communicate. And he was also there for all these other miracles. He comes to Tabitha and says, I know that she will be raised by Christ. And he says that even to the blind man. He says, Christ, Jesus Christ heals you. It's not St. Peter saying that on his own, but saying that Jesus is the one that will heal you and Jesus is the one that raises Tabitha. But St. Peter talks to her as if she is alive, which I think is very important for us in the message of this epistle reading is we have the saints on the walls. We all know where they are. We know that they're in heaven. We know that they're miraculous. We know that they're holy. We know that they are in the embrace of God. But when we hear people say, well, I talk uh, to, to God and I don't know if he hears me. Or I pray to the saints, I don't know if they hear me. Or I even speak to someone whom I love who died and I don't know if they hear me. Well, they all do. They all hear us. In fact, we have even the ones who are not in the embrace of God, hear us. We see that from the gospel reading where it's about the rich man and Lazarus. The Lazarus is in the kingdom of heaven and the rich man is in hell and they are able to hear each other through Abraham who is kind of the mediator between the ones who are crying out, save me, from Lazarus who is in the warm embrace of God. But the, the important thing here is the walls are down. In the presence of God, in the prayerfulness of our hearts, in the miraculous being of Christ within us, the grace of God within us, the walls are down. So St. Peter talks to Tabitha as if he was talking to anyone else. And he simply says, Tabitha, arise. It's not more complicated than that. It's not more... 
Well, Tabitha, if you can hear me, get up. He doesn't say that. He speaks to her. He commands her prayerfully to rise from the dead. And then when he comes out and he presents her to the other widows, there's two things that don't happen. Number one, Tabitha doesn't say anything about what happened. There's no other reference in, in the Bible about her speaking about her death, about what happened when she was dead, about that event of being raised from, what did that feel like? She says nothing. And we also see that in all the other resurrections, we don't hear it from Christ himself. He doesn't, he doesn't say what it was like to be dead and to, to be alive. We don't hear it from Lazarus. We don't hear it from the synagogue's daughter, uh, synagogue leader's daughter. We don't hear it from the widow's son. It's quiet. And St. Peter comes out too as he was the, the prayer, prayerful intercessor and the, the deliverer through the grace of his ordination. He doesn't come out and say, look what I just did. He doesn't say anything. He just presents her, and then we read later that he goes on with his journey. But what happened? The people were converted. He didn't need to say anything. St. Peter didn't need to say a word. It was Tabitha being alive that was the proclamation of, of the greatness of God. And many believed in, in God, because, in Christ, because of Tabitha and also because of the blind man. But what does this say to us today? Well, it tells us a couple things. First, when we pray, realize that God hears our prayer, whether it's truly from the heart, whether it's disingenuous, whether it's rushed, whether it's uh, labored, what, he hears our prayers. And we have to understand, too, that we are having a communication with God. We don't have to preface it with, God, if you hear me, then this. Or if you can, no. It doesn't work that way. We say in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we just start talking. That's what happens in church, in all our prayers. We just start talking to God. So, talk with God and realize that he hears you. Talk with the saints and realize that they hear you. Pray for those who have gone on from this life to the next because they hear you as well. There's a story of uh, Elder Jacobus of Evia, who there was a monk who was really bothering him his entire life. Just was a nasty, nasty monk. Now you might say, well, how does that happen? It's a monastery. It happens everywhere, okay? This nasty monk dies. Elder Jacobus um, continues to pray for him. And he has a dream that this monk comes to him, pleads with him to say, please do not take me off your prayer list because the only time I see light in the darkness of where I am is when you say my name in prayer. Think about that. The communication is open. They can hear. And realize, too, that whatever we ask in God's name, we will receive. But we also have to realize, too, that St. Paul says not everyone is a worker of miracles, not everyone is a prophet, not everyone is a teacher. But what do we have to strive after? He says, love, to strive after love. And when we strive after love, all those things will come to us through the hands of those who, who have been given those specific talents and graces by God. So as you think about St. Peter today, and as you look at, at his demeanor from the way he was before to the way he is today in the book of Acts. Remember, he denied Christ three times. He was scared of being told that he was going to be a disciple. And then after the resurrection of Christ, after the Holy Spirit comes on him, he now is walking, his shadow is healing people. His mere conversation with the dead now becomes life-giving to them. The transformation for us must be the same. From the way we were before Holy Week, before Lent, to now, where are we? And as we approach Pentecost, this great feast of the descent of the Holy Spirit, 
where will the grace of God take us? And that is all in our disposition, opening ourselves up and praying to him and asking for his help, for his grace, and most of all, to understand that the lines of communication are open between the living and the dead, the saints, and most of all, with God. Amen.